In this video, we're going to go over this gigantic box of stuff. The Z6 Filmmaker's Kit. Of course, a Z6 body. We got the adapter for F-mount lenses. We have a Moza gimbal. We have an Atmos Ninja 5 recorder, which is pretty impressive. Also, spare battery, HDMI cable, Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, and a few other little pieces. I've already learned a few things. It is missing a few pieces that are kind of vital. One, it doesn't have batteries for the recorder, MPF, Sony style batteries. Also is missing a few little pieces like filters, which I think are useful in video situations. Besides that, it is a pretty comprehensive kit to get started with. Of course, the gimbal will add an extra bit of stabilization and such to it. And you got the recorder to get high quality video. Oh, and of course you need some type of storage, either the XQD card in the camera or also uh, SSD. So I'm just going with a SSD drive that I have on hand. It's a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Blue, which is on the approved list of drives. With that, we're going to get into the kit itself look at everything, try it out. Canon EOS M50, and then I have a Nikon Z6. The Z6, I have the f4 lens, it's 24 to 70, and I have it set to 35 millimeters or around 36 millimeters. And I have the 22 millimeter f2 lens on the M50. What I'm doing is 1 50th of a second on both of them, but I have f2.5 on the M50 and f4 on the Z6. Okay, now we have the Z6 as it is, and I also increased the aperture on the M50 up to f2. With the f4 lens, you can see there is a little bit of limitation to that aperture, but still pretty versatile. There is quite a size difference in these two cameras. So, what I'm going to do now is put the 32mm lens on the M50, and we will see that in action. All right, now we have the 32 millimeter lens on the M50 set to f2.5 to get that equivalence thing going with this other lens and the Z6. So he's still significantly smaller in size. Of course, we'll see in the video, I'm going to turn this light off and we'll see if noise is any different when a difficult situation. I already have the main key light off. See if there's any differences in noise at 1080p with the two cameras. What I'm going to do now with the M50 is increase the aperture high enough to see that makes a difference. So now that the M50 is at f1.4, see if that made a big difference with all of that. I'm going to put the monitor on the Z6. Have the Ninja 5 on there. Man, I can see all the details on my face. That's no good. What is this? Oh my. There's a lot of options. Sees where things are. Oh wow. Hey, that's neat. You can see. So right now I'm focusing, or I'm recording through the camera with the standard memory card slot. It doesn't show on the screen though that I'm recording, even though I have it set up to use the controls on both both things, I think. Oh, and look at that. That's real nice. Oh, black and white. Let's see. Wow. That's, that's, that's really, yeah. Flip. That's not the type of flip that I want. Need mirror. What is what's happening here? Z6. Z6. Why are you not focusing on me? Okay. Let's hit record. So this is Rec 709. I've got it's not going to tell me. 
So that's the input work 709. Stop that. So LT compression, that's the lower end compression. ProRes, I don't want to mess with the other one. I can't say that it's good. See that delay when I'm talking, but it does give you an idea of framing. So there must be a setting to mirror the screen. Just don't know where it could possibly possibly be. Yeah, so we're at 422 compression with the recorder. We're also recording on the memory card of the Z6. I believe. Yeah, it's going. So that's actually really impressive. At least you can have a backup on the camera and then have the recorder make the main main recording. So wondering why this looks so much wider than this one. Maybe it's just the perspective. It's not actually recording. There we go. So high quality 1080p. Whoops. Yeah. I don't even know what I'm doing. Man. So much blemishes. It says HD. Why does it say HD? In log. Whoa. Two cameras. 1080p. 4K. Just wanted to see in camera if that makes a difference with quality. So we're do HQ and record 8 bit. 4K, 24, see how it looks compared to that. Quality, that's going to be a large file. 4K on this side. Now we'll switch to 4K here and adjust, adjust things a little bit. This is 4K with a 2.64 4 crop. Something like that. That an F2. So that's probably not a fair comparison. This is F4 with the full frame. If that would focus, maybe will it focus? This is too close. Will it focus? Mm hmm. It focused. That's good. Can I get in the middle here? I'm going to stop this before I run out of space. Let's go into LT everything. So we're doing LT compression on the recorder. It's still going with the 4K. I'm going to put this on F4. That's more like it with the exposure. This is slightly got more light coming from the side. Still looks terrible. Yeah. It's actually focusing better than I would have expected. We haven't even messed with the gimbal, but we will. I've used uh, Yun Zayun gimbal, but it is a lot smaller. Anyways, let me get some more light on here. F 2.5, go all the way to F 2. Whoa. Moral of the story lenses are important. So, with the large aperture on the that of course we'll see how good the sensor is in comparison because i ex expect the sensor on here the z6 to be so much better so this can do a safety track for the audio press output gain button three and power button one so we have a safety channel going on there 
you can only record with that. You can talk up to the microphone. You can see to the different levels on the different channels. Get a little closer. See how good it sounds on each channel. There is definitely a difference between the two different channels. One is higher than the other. This is ultimate quality at 10 bit, 4K, 24 frames a second. I'm going to run out of SSD space relatively quickly doing that. So what I'm going to do here is switch this one to 4K again and just see, just see how, how, uh, yeah, different the differences in this, if I can even edit this, who knows, but do it relatively quickly so I don't run out of space. And I'm going to have to clear out my SSD for editing, I'm sure. Oh, lost focus. Come on, M50, come on. I have not messed with the levels on the Z camera, so chances are it's not good, but we'll see. Should really put manual levels on there. This can take in audio as well. You can see the levels going. Not bad. Test one, two, three. Test one, two, three get really close maybe if I angle just slightly like this the same amount of volume to each one <laughs> so of course it's coming down this one's coming out I don't think I want to touch it so yeah it's messing around with this gear in a video situation this is a lot of stuff to go over and try to figure out what works for the situation. All right, I think I have it fully assembled. That was quite a effort there. It is quite a beast. So, microphone, I'm not sure if this should go on the recorder. It would be a little better balanced, but recorder down here, this can't move back too much. And got the HDMI cable, this dangly one for the microphone so you're not going to have much movement when it's set up like this of course we've got the grip slash tripod which is an absolute necessity for this thing and balancing I didn't read specifically how to balance this one I'm sure if I read the directions I'll get a better better balance out of it but is not it's not even close even so it still functions still pretty pretty good oh, it's on some type of locked off mode and it's powerful enough to really handle this crazy setup so yeah this would take quite a while to figure out what the heck it's it's doing here. There is a trigger right here. Like a triple chat maybe. Oh, that's not good. Well anyways, that is the full deal as far as I know. And of course SSD battery on here. This doesn't matter. It just adds a side weight to the gimbal and more general weight to the whole equation. You can feel it shaking a little bit, so it's not, Gimbal is not too thrilled about this setup, how I have it, and then I assume the balancing, but anyways, 
that is it. Now as a look at the Nikon Z6 Filmmaker's Kit, there is a lot to it, but it still needs a few things to make you fully ready to go out in the field with that setup. You need batteries for the recorder, that's one of the most important things. If you're buying this whole kit, you want the recorder to be functional. It does come with an AC adapter thing, which is good for learning about it, trying it out, but with the batteries, they're MPF style Sony batteries or you can use third-party generics, which is what I used and it worked just fine. But things to keep in mind. Also, the charger for the gimbal doesn't have any type of AC adapter. It is USB, but probably need pretty good amount of amps for four large batteries. In that case, it doesn't come with an AC adapter, USB charger for the microphone as well. So, with the kit, Besides that, you also want the memory cards. XQD cards can be pretty pricey. You just have to keep that in mind with video, especially because you'll need large cards. And with the SSD drives, I did use the Western Digital Blue. Worked just fine with the ProRes 4K at the highest quality setting. I didn't notice any issues with recording. All that stuff together is a very solid videography kit. I didn't get a lot of time to try it out. My main plan didn't work out so I did a lot of testing here as you saw in the video and so much to look at especially with the recorder. I do think the Z6 plus the recorder is an amazing combination especially in the future when they add even more features with firmware. They're going to do full raw video but even with ProRes stuff it worked just fine. It looks very nice. One thing that I think is a really good feature with the Z6 Plus that recorder is that you can record to two things at once if you're doing the 8-bit. If you want 10-bit you can't do this but with the 8-bit you can have that instant backup if you have a large enough XQD card. Although with the Z6 just keep in mind that you'll have a recording limit of 30 minutes at least at the point of this video. I'm pretty sure that's, that's the limit on there for that camera. So that's a nice feature. The microphone seemed to work pretty well. I didn't have a super large amount of time to try it out, but I do really like that feature where you can have the two different channels at a different level. So you can have that safety track on that microphone, which is really interesting and they'll be useful to have in a lot of situations. With the battery on there, it is rechargeable, which is good, and you can actually put AA batteries in that microphone as far as I can tell. So in emergency situations, if you needed some type of power for that mic, you could either do USB or you could do the AA batteries. With the gimbal, I didn't have a lot of time to try it out, but I have used one other gimbal before. They are similar. Balancing was pretty challenging with all that stuff on it with the arm and then the cables coming out and it didn't seem to have a big issue when it was kind of semi-balanced. Of course with the zoom lenses and gimbals there's always going to be some imperfect balance because if you do change that zoom level it will change things up with balancing. That gimbal is very solid, it's very large and it is definitely powerful enough to deal with that stuff, all that big bulk. There's a lot to this kit, but I think the main things that I really like about it are the Z6 and that recorder. Just those two pieces together have a huge amount of capability to them. You can see so many options, so many ways to see your video beforehand with that recorder. And then you get the dual backup if you want at 8-bit. You have the super high quality 4K stuff with the 10-bit, which I did try, and that looks really nice. Big kit, very expensive, but it gives you a lot of options and I guess it is a bit of a discount compared to if you bought it all separately, if you do want everything in there. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks to CameraCraft for letting me try this stuff out over the weekend and definitely an interesting kit from a photographer's perspective. There's so much to it and so much I don't understand or know about yet, but even that quick look got me a lot of information and, and thinking about how those type of tools work. Hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Scott for every bonsai. If you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing. That helps me out and gives me more chances at trying stuff out to make videos about. Anyways, thanks again. That's a boy uh, microphone.
This thing gets really hot. I don't know how my batteries are going to last in that thing. I got another camera. Cameras on cameras on cameras. Oh boy.